Take us through some of the steps that the business community has taken to ensure that the um, situation remains peaceful and that businesses are protected in the aftermath of the, pos of the possibility of an outbreak of violence. Uh, thank you very much. We have actually had a process going on since this time last year called um, Kenya Daima, where we were working with our employees and a lot of our constituents to ensure that the message of peace was uh, being heard across the whole country. And we are confident that as a result of the groundwork that has been laid since this time last year, um, most people are going to stay restrained during this time, especially now that the votes have been counted and there have been delays in the vote counting, um, that people stay restrained. And we've seen some very positive signs so far. Now, have we seen any visible policing um, to ensure that, um, you know, voters um, and supporters of the various candidates remain calm and that people do not, you know, get anxious as the tensions rise and as the, I suppose, the positions of the candidates become clearer um, and whether, a, you know, a clear winner or loser um, uh, arise? Um, w w there is a lot of calm in the country at the moment. Um, from the last time... The main concern is obviously when the candidates come out and what they say. Um, that is what could, mm -hmm. uh, could, uh, could cause, ignite some, uh, some negative activities. But as of now, um, since Monday, yesterday a lot of people stayed away from work and that was a voluntary thing by the employers. And beginning today, people have started going back to work and uh, they, they, they are back in the, in, into their offices. And I think that is a, a demonstration that there is a growing confidence that the outcome of the election will be taken in the spirit of the new constitution. Now, of course, the, um, the big question is whether the candidates will give their cue um, or the cue to their uh, supporters. Now, we have um, seen media reports, certainly, uh, some candidates objecting to the role of, of the British, uh, suggesting that the, 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 the foreign government has uh, been meddling in the internal elective processes of Kenya. Has that allegation uh, been widely supported amongst supporters, or is it, um, you know, politicking at this stage? This is pure speculation and it is politics as far as we are concerned. Obviously the longer it takes for results to come out, the bigger the room in there is for people to begin throwing stories that could derail the process. And, and, and that particular story, in fact, um, we treat with the contempt it deserves. There is nothing like that. Um, we have been engaging with the development partners with the diplomatic community in Kenya and we are assured by them and we do not expect that they will actually begin to meddle mm -hmm. in any of the activities inside Kenya. So now, that particular story, in fact, we are, we, we are ignoring it. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the, the big issue is um, when exactly the vote um, will be tallied and when the votes uh, will be declared. And, and the big issue is whether there will be a clear winner. We know that in terms of the new constitution, there has to be an outright winner winning 50% plus um, so that you don't have a second uh, runoff, uh, which is scheduled in April. From where you sit, so is that likely to happen? Are we likely to see a second runoff or do you think that the end of the tally uh, you know, from now on will give us a very clear indication of who the outright winner is? We can only go by the polls that happened prior to the election and those indicated a dead heat and a potential for a runoff. Mm -hmm. um, currently, the Inter Independent Electoral and Boundary Commission has resorted to um, getting the physical counts from each of the constituencies to come to the headquarters and relay the results phys uh, physically. Um, whatever we saw before were basically provisional results and it is only now that we're getting official results from the IEBC and we are looking forward to maybe tomorrow morning when we expect that most of the counting or mm -hmm. the announcement of the actual tallying from the individual constituencies around the country will have come through and will have a clear indication of whether there's going to be a runoff or not. I wouldn't like to specific, uh, speculate at the moment, but I think from the as you said, from the opinion polls prior to the voting, it was a dead heat. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, um, without wanting to commit to who the likely winner uh, is, is going to be, uh, give us a sense from the business community, um, 
what would be a, an outcome that would please you, um, that would restore confidence, that would restore a sense of calm in the capital city, but also send a signal to the investment community both in Kenya and in East Africa, but also globally, that the election process is in fact the beginning of a new dawn for Kenya. Let, let me correct one thing. The fact that um, this election period, we have not had any decline in investor confidence. The last election, yes, we had. This time around, we haven't seen a significant decline in investor confidence in the process, especially because of the amount of work that had been done by the business community, civil society, and the diplomatic community in giving a true reflection of what is happening in the ground. Okay. So for us, what we're looking for is basically an outcome that will be fair according to the constitution and whoever wins, wins and we continue doing business as a country. And the outcome we are expecting will give us the confidence that the international community is looking for.